Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and today we are in the garage because it is DIY Wednesday. And what are we DIYing today? I'll tell you. Just like I tell you every other Wednesday we DIY. The weather is getting really, really nice. It's time to start like getting outdoors, getting your yards in order. If your yard is anything like mine, my backyard looks like a shit show. Like the weeds have taken over. I'm sitting on my garage floor because we are actually going to make these amazing galvanized planter buckets. I was looking online, trying to get inspired for spring. I'm noticing that these galvanized buckets used as like planters, you know, to put nice spring flowers in are kind of all the rage right now. So I was like, oh yeah, let's see. I mean, Pottery Barn has them, everywhere you look has them. But I saw these ones and they were on Wayfair.com. These, aren't those super cute? Like you just want to buy them and then you say, Yes, Wayfair.com. Put in my cart until you notice that Wayfair.com has them on sale right now for $155.99. And originally they're $300. Now this does say you get a set of three. $300 regular price, that's $100 a bucket. At $155, 48% off, that's still a lot of money a bucket. But they're super cute. And I think what makes them cute is the stenciling. So I was like, you know what I say. I can make that. I actually was like, I wonder if I can just get galvanized sheet metal, put it in a tube and like make a bucket out of real metal. And then I looked at the price of galvanized sheet metal and it's not cheap. So we are gonna get real creative and we are gonna make these amazing, amazing, super cute galvanized buckets out of regular buckets. Just plastic buckets that I got at the Home Depot. And I got them in three sizes because that's how I think they're sold on wafer.com for $155.89. On Pottery Barn, they have a bunch of different sizes and they don't have the cute stencil on them. Pottery Barn is selling them anywhere from $69 to $149. And I really think the price is just because they're kind of popular. So I think everybody's like, jack up the price because stupid people will buy them at this price because they want to be on trend. Well, we want to be on trend, but we don't want to pay a million dollars for it. Round metal planters that read flower market in assorted sizes. Oh, it says it doesn't have any drainage holes. So good thing we're making it ourselves so we don't spend all this money on cute flowers for spring and then they all die because they have root rot. So we're gonna put drainage holes in ours. The dimensions, I know my buckets aren't gonna measure exactly the ones on Wayfair, but it'll give us a good indication because these three sizes were all I could find at the Home Depot. Now, Pottery Barns doesn't even have the cute stencil, but we'll see what their dimensions are because those start at $69 and go all the way up to 149. So they have a nine inch high, an 11 inch high. Okay, we're just gonna say 69, to 149. They're tiniest, tiniest baby. This guy, $69. Yeah, $69. We're not spending $69 on a galvanized bucket. I promise you that. We're gonna copy the ones from Wayfair. We're gonna use the pricing from Pottery Barn to see where we come in at. So I went to the Home Depot. I got galvanized metal rustoleum and I actually got a light version and a dark version. The reason is because I felt like mm, I just wanted to add dimension and I was almost afraid this one was going to be too silvery. Three cans. We'll just round that up to $18. The white bucket, this little gem right here, this one's $3.79. This one is $2.70. And this black one, $4.23. 4 dollars 4 4 and three. That's good. And then, the piece de resistance to make these look just like the buckets from wayfetter.com. These, galvanized tube strap. I don't want these, because the ones on Wayfair have these cute little handles. So I'm envisioning taking this and screwing it in to this bucket to make it look like a cute little handle and I think it's gonna work. I got different sizes for the different size buckets, so bigger ones. I mean, I just think that's gonna be darling. And then I got screws with nuts on them because, so my first thing is, is I need to figure out how to take the handle off of these buckets. I just thought it would be easy, like they would pop out. I don't think that's gonna be the case. Underneath the little lip of it, 
the handle's hooked on. I was hoping I could just cut it off, but I think you need some really powerful cutters. So what I'm thinking is, I'm gonna pry it enough to unbend it maybe. Oh, oh yeah, when all else fails, break the plastic on the bucket. We're gonna put a handle right over that anyways. Oh, I guess I could just cut the pla- I'm just gonna cut the plastic around the thing. <gasps> oh, once you get one side out, the other side just pops right out. So, we only have one little tiny baby like casualty. I'm just gonna press that back in and then you'll never know. And plus, when we put our handles over the top, you'll really never know. This one should be really easy because it's thin. Ah, sookie sookie, that one was easy. Look at us go. This one might be the hardest one of all. I don't know. Oh shoot, man, this one, this one's in there. Okay, 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 here we go. It was way easier than you think. Just get a pair of pliers and then just get it, get it. Okay, so now our buckets don't have any handles on them. And right now you're thinking, I don't know, Sherry, this shit is not gonna look as cute as the ones you saw on Wayfair, but they are. Did you see the Pottery Barn succulent thing? Shit's gonna look cuter. My next thing is, is I wanna drill drainage holes at the bottom of each one of these planter boxes. So I'm gonna get my drill all ready for drilling drainage holes. Okay, drill is ready, and I'm just gonna pop one hole in the bottom of each one of these suckers. I was just reading my drill bits. I'm sure there's like a proper drill bit for plastic, but I figure a drill bit's a drill bit. So, turn my buckets over. I'm just going right in the middle, pressing down. Hello. Oh, you know what? Let's take two on this. I'm gonna take this little nubbin out, because that's not working very good. There we go, that's okay. Here we go. Why isn't it spinning? Ah, here we go. We're making a dent. Oh my gosh. Part of me is just like get a fucking nail and hammer a hole in the bottom of it. Because this sim doesn't seem to wanna to go through the plastic. Okay, no worries, we'll make this work. We just need a drainage hole. So I got a screw, because it was the quickest thing I could find. And I'm just gonna the screw in. Oh, but now that that hole is started, I bet you our drill will work. Let's try now. Nope. Why? This can't be, this can't be right. So it's definitely the plastic that the drill bits are having a hard time going through. I just switched out another set of drill bits and tried it again. They didn't go through. The screw and the hammer is what we're gonna be using for our drainage holes. There's my drainage hole, you can see it. Drainage hole, so let's make it. Ooh, that cracked the whole bottom of that. Okay, no worries there, that's a good drainage hole. This plastic is way thinner than this one. But this is real life. This is the trials and tribulations of something that you think of in your head sometimes doesn't go always to plan. And you just gotta regroup and think of something else. So this bucket, when I punched a hole in it with the screw, it cracked it. That's okay. It's not like dirt's gonna fall through there. And plus we have a nice little drainage hole. So and this one's thick, so I'm not worried about it cracking. Oh, it did crack it. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we're just rolling with it. That's a nice, nice drainage hole crack. Perfect. It's exactly what I intended. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Not worried about it. I actually, I'm really not. I am worried about how I'm gonna do the sides though because I wanna screw in my handles. How do you do that? I know, I don't even need to make holes. I can just, with a drill, screw in instead of pounding, use a screw to screw it in because it'll be a pointier tip. Let's just see what works. Using the screw as like a drill bit was money because I just tested it on the bottom of this black pot. We're just gonna make another drainage hole. Boom, boom, goes right in, comes right out. So I'm gonna use a screw as my drill bit for the buckets. Even though I cracked the shit out of this white one, I do wanna make sure I actually have a drainage hole. Yay, oh, I'm so much happier now. So note to self, don't try to hammer something into hard plastic because it will crack it. Just use a screw as a drill bit and you'll be fine. I love it. This is real life, live and learn. All right, so I got these cute galvanized tube straps 
I kind of wanted them to go at an angle. That's cute, right? So I'm just gonna mark it, screw it, put it together. And it's all gonna work beautifully because everything has gone to shit so far, so I feel like everything else will go smoothly. <laughs> I want it to go at an angle. I think we could make that work. We're gonna make it work, because that's how I want it. Okay, that's good. And I, I did kind of go down at an angle. Come on. It takes a little bit of pressure to get it started and I'm so nervous to put too much pressure because I don't want to crack the sides. So we've got two in that I kind of did in an angle right on the lip of the bucket. Held that like that, screwed it in. So I got these screws, number 10, 24 by 3 eighths of an inch because I didn't need them to be super duper long. I just made sure that they had little nuts so that there was something to go into. Ah, there it goes. You just have to push on a little bit. Don't be nervous. I mean, be nervous because you could end up breaking your whole entire bucket. Let me try the other one. Don't break my bucket. Okay, it's actually pretty cute. I need to tighten this a little more, I think. Mm-hmm. That gave me some nice washer room on the inside. I mean, we're really just thinking of how to do this as we go along, such as life. Okay. I like it. So my handles just don't pull out even though they're in there pretty tight. I got these washers to put in on the inside for extra stability. That's good. Okay, one handle down. Oh, and see how cute? It's kind of up instead of straight out. I'm thinking, is it cute? Yeah, it's cute. I was also wondering if I should have put it a little bit higher. Too late now because I have one in. So now I'm just gonna do the rest. So I'm on my last handle of my last bucket and I'm not gonna lie I want to kill myself and I'm starting to think that maybe these type of handles aren't such a bad idea I know it's because I don't have the proper tools I don't have a drill bit that I don't even know if they make a drill bit that drills into plastic I'm using a screw I want to put these little handles at an angle which was very difficult and they're not even as much of an angle as I want them to be this bucket it doesn't have a lip to sit on so I couldn't rest the handle upwards so this bucket is just gonna be a straight out bucket which is still cute but yeah screwing these stupid handles that aren't even really handles in was kind of a pain and then also too don't get alarmed when this happens if you can tell it's kind of an oval because I'm pressing on it so hard it happened to the white bucket too and you can just Press it back into shape back to a circle, but I was like oh crap now I've made ovals and that's not what we signed up for at Wayfair.com It's not like this process is taking me hours and hours It's just a little bit more tedious than one would have liked but it's gonna look really cute So all of this pain in the assness is just gonna make it look that much cuter in the end anyways screwing in my last handle Yay, and now I just have to put the little nuts on the back of these. See, oval. Don't worry, we'll make that be a circle. Now that we have all this bullshit out of the way, we're actually gonna get to some fun stuff. Yay! See, it's gonna be cute already with these cute little handles. It's not gonna look like a plastic bucket. So now we get to paint. Okay. Yay, I got my Rust-Oleum hammered, we're gonna call galvanized metal spray paint. It does say it works on metals, wood, and more. So I'm hoping the and more is plastic because I'm not sure how this is gonna take. Oh man, you know how I am with getting lids off spray paint. It says squeeze and pull, that's never right. I mean, seriously, I, I swear to God. Why can I never get lids off of spray paint? Does anyone else have this trouble? I don't understand it. <gasps> there. Oh shit. Oh, I hope I did not break that. <gasps> if I broke it, this spray paint was not cheap. Seriously. All right, let's just give it a shot. Okay, I didn't break the nozzle. Good thing. These plastic buckets are so effing static clean. I tried to clean them off as much as possible, but everything is adhering to them. Then I was like, well, it'll just give it a more of a rustic, antique, vintage, farm, house look. So I don't really care. I'm just gonna spray paint it. It's actually taking quite nicely. Okay, okay. 
looks good. I was nervous it wasn't gonna look that good. I'm getting excited. It looks like a metal bucket. ish coat is on of the light can and it actually didn't take me as much spray paint as I thought I bought two of the like silvery silvery and one of the dark silver I was gonna do the dark silver as more of like accent but I'm thinking that I could save myself ten dollars and take both of those cans back and just use this because I think these are pretty good they kind of look like metal maybe I'm gonna hit the tops real quick and then we'll wait for them to dry. Okay, so coat one is dry enough and I'm gonna go in with coat two. I was looking at them and I'm actually pretty happy with the smallest bucket. It actually looks like it has the most metal look. You can kind of see how it has like kind of metally texture to it. Yeah, you can see that. I think it's because I sprayed up close and personal to it. I think that's the key to getting that nice galvanized metal look. There's a giant hair in here. I'm gonna get up close and personal with the big one and the little one and see if I can achieve the more metal look. So I'm getting real close. Oh, mm-hmm, close, close is good. Yeah, that's better. That's a better, better look by far. Close is the way to go. Spray close on this metal stuff, which is what they tell you not to do when you're spray painting furniture, but it's achieving a way better look. Less like silver painted buckets and more like galvanized planter buckets. Okay, so the buckets are completely dry and I'm not loving them. I'm gonna be real honest. I think it's because they're so like shiny. I know metal is shiny and all, but I don't know. You can kind of tell where it kind of looks like it's galvanized metal, which, yeah, that's good. That's, that's what I bought this spray paint for, but uh, I don't know. I would, it, it, they're just bugging me. I was really examining the inspiration photo. These ones have more dimension. So they're not just like one solid silvery color, which I kind of knew because I bought a darker hammered spray paint. I didn't want to use it because it was almost $6 and I wanted to return it. But I think in order to get that dimension, I'm going to have to hit it with a coat of the different colors. Color. Then two, the tops of these are really, really dark brown, almost like they've rusted, which I do have brown paint, so not a problem there. And then they've also kind of like antiqued with maybe a little bit of a washed out brown, the handles and the bottom. So I'm gonna hit these with this darker spray paint to try to get that desired effect, that tone on tone. Otherwise, these are just gonna look like plastic buckets that I spray painted silver and that is not what we're doing. I'm not worried because as I always say, we're perfect and everything we do is money. So this project is not gonna be any different. We're just gonna hit it with another spray paint. So let's spray paint these another darker color. Okay, I'm already 10 times happier. So the darker hammered metal spray really gave me the desired dimensions. That was good. So when you're recreating this, learn from me. Start out with the brighter silver. Do the whole thing, use the whole can on your three buckets. Spray close, spray far, 
get get it in there. Then, when that's all dry, come back with the darker can of the hammered metal spray. I don't know if you could tell from the fast forwarding of the spray paint, but I went in kind of heavy on the bottoms and the tops and in little sections and then I sprayed kind of far away just to like trickle it in. I'm looking for dimension. This is already vast improvement. Look at that dimension. Oh, is that galvanized metal? Did you pay a fortune for those? No, it's plastic painter buckets that I spray painted. So the illusion is starting to take form. Now I'm gonna get my brown paint and we're gonna rust up the tops and the handles. So that's next. Okay, so I had this brown apple barrel, brown acrylic paint that you can get at the Joann's for 99 cents. It was in the cupboard. Then I just stumbled across this orange paint when I was getting a little sponge brush and I thought this one would be perfect for going around the edge. But I grabbed this orange because I don't know if this straight brown is gonna look like rust and maybe I need to add some orange to it. So we're just gonna play around with it. It's faux painting, you know. Just a little dab, give it more of a rusty color. Okay, the little bit of orange I put in there did absolutely nothing. So we're gonna put some more. That's a lot. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh, it kind of, it does, it does. It looks like rust. So I'm gonna hit the top edges here. Yeah. Instead of rubbing, I'm gonna tamp, 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 tamp. So we're tamping, we're tamping, you know, it's a rusty bucket. I'm gonna hit the tops real good. And then I'm also gonna go in and tamp, tamp, tamp lightly on the bottoms and the handles. And I'm almost thinking I might need to add some more brown. We're gonna play around with it. We can come back in with a little brown later after this first coat's kind of dry. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do where I hit a little rust paint right here. I'm gonna tamp, tamp, tamp it and like spread it out a little bit. Ooh, yeah. It gives it a little bit more dimension and a little dirt, I guess, if you will. Okay, I'm gonna do all the tops first and then come back and add some dimension to the bottoms and maybe the sides and the handles. So I've done all the tops. Like I said, I think I'm gonna put a titch more brown in my paint and do some distressing on the handles as well as the bottom and maybe here and there. Yeah, I'm gonna add some more brown. Whoa, that came out a lot faster than I thought. So let's just go and hit this a little more. I'm kind of digging them now, so yay. So as I've been going along and distressing, I discovered some really good paint techniques. Don't know if you can tell, the big bucket is looking pretty awesome. I'll tell you what I discovered. It's called, I invented a new paint technique. I'm sure I didn't invent it, but I bet you I invented the name. It's called the paint and rub, maybe stamp and rub. I don't know. But whatever it is, it helped me achieve this really good bottom that looks really distressed. And I also did it on the handles. And then I did it in just certain areas where I felt it needed a little bit more texture or distressing. I've also hit, because these paint buckets have these other ridges, I just lightly hit the edges of them with the brown paint. And then I did the handles like a lot and then came in and just went around the bucket wherever I thought. But for the bottom, let me show you this technique. Load up your little sponge brush, just go in little sections and you're gonna go tam, 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 tam. Maybe sometimes you're a little high, maybe sometimes you're a little low, doesn't matter. Because then you're gonna take your towel and you're gonna rub it and rub it real good. And it gets in to, I don't know if this bucket has grooves, but it kind of gets in to like the nooks and crannies of the bucket. So I went all around the bucket with the tamp and rub, tamp and rub, tamp and rub, tamp, 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 tamp. Staying a half an inch away from the bottom and then rubbing it out, <laughs> rubbing it real good. And you're basically rubbing off the paint, but it's leaving a little bit of paint in the nooks and crannies. And then watch. 
So tam, 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 tam. Seeing that one, I went a little higher with my tam, tam, tamping, but it doesn't matter. You just rub, and then you kind of like rub and gradate back into where you left off, and then pull it, rub it, pull it, move the paint around till you like it. So that's giving my bottom a lot of dimension already. You can see, I don't want it to look like a stripe, so you might go back in and rub, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a child, rub it out a little more, and then when you're satisfied with that, you're gonna load up your little sponge. You're gonna go just in certain areas, just on the very, very edge, tamp, 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 and leave it and that kind of gives it a little more flair, I think. Seriously, the buckets are looking really good. I did get carried away with the rusting in some areas of the bucket, but I don't mind it. I think they're starting to really come to life. So I just have the little bucket left to distress, and then we're gonna stencil them. So don't forget, tamp, 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 wipe, wipe, wipe. Tamp, 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 wipe, wipe, wipe. So, remember how I said that we're perfect and everything we do is money? Well, it's the truth because the proof is in the pudding. These aren't even all the way done yet and they look so good. I'm 10 times happier that I took a little bit of time, did a darker coat of spray paint, and then did some cool like rust distressing on them. The rust distressing was not my idea. I was just copying the exact picture where they have brown like rust along the top edge because their buckets didn't have as much like detail I added some rust and then I put some rust along the bottom but the buckets in the picture do have rust along the bottom as well so now what we get to do is put the stencil on which is just gonna take these suckers over the top so I'm gonna throw this paper plate away wash this and then get the stencils prepared and my black paint and then we'll stencil them and then they'll be done. I've washed out my little brush. I brought out some scissors as well because I got this pack of stencils at the Joann's and then this little stencily thing at the Joann's. So the picture, they say flower market established in 1874 and then number 102. So that's what we're gonna stencil and it's in black. What I thought was really cute about this is that you could customize these. So instead of established in 1874, you could get creative and put like established whenever your family started or whenever you bought your house, whatever. You could put whatever date on there that you want, a date that's special to you. So I thought that was kind of cute even though that's so not my personality, but I did think it was kind of cute. So what I was hoping was I could, because they're just a sheet, rather than like stencil an M and then wait for it to dry and then move it and then stencil an A. What I was hoping to do was cut them out and then tape them all together in the word market and then stencil it as one word. That's what I'm gonna do. So I pieced together my flower stencil. I ran in and got a white piece of paper so I cut the, all the letters out. I used the white piece of paper just so I could see the spacing. I totally eyeballed that shit. I brought out a ruler like I was like oh maybe you can like space them out totally perfect and then I said no and I just eyeballed it. It worked out well. I just used regular old scotch tape and I've got my painter's tape on the big bucket flower and then pretend market and then the little established will be there and then the number will be there all of that will fit perfectly on the big bucket however on the smaller buckets if i put flower and then market i just have enough room for the established it gets real hairy on the little bucket you've got flower and then market and that's it I might use the littlest ones, but then I don't really like the little ones. So what I might do, the little one might just say flower and then mark it. They could say established and then number, that might be cuter. So the little bucket is not gonna get the flower market. It's just gonna get the word established and whatever and then number and whatever. So they'll all three be slightly different. I think that'll be great. So I'm gonna line up the word flower here and then put painter's tape to hold it in place. I think that looks good. We're going with it. 
I just want to use the sparest amount of painter's tape, even though they say painter's tape doesn't peel off paint. I don't know about that and spray paint on a plastic bucket. So I'm going to use the littlest, babyest amount, barely touching it down. Oh yeah, that looks good. And this is actually in my most nervous part because if I fuck up this stencil, then what do I do? I mean, I won't because I'm a professional. Okay, voila, flower. Well, you know, it's an antique bucket and someone probably hand stenciled those letters on by hand, hand stenciled them on by hand. And so it probably wasn't that perfect whenever these buckets were established in 18... 53 or whatever. So I'm not that worried about it. Don't be that worried about it. I got some more Apple Barrel black paint from the Joann's. Now, the key with stenciling is you gotta have not a lot of paint on this. So you wanna tap it on your plate and then really like just tap it around so you don't have a lot, a lot of paint on your sponge. And then make sure you go straight up and down, no side to side, because you don't want the paint to get underneath your stencil. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous, but okay, we just have to do it. We just have to do it. We're awesome and it's gonna work out. It'll be fine. So here we go. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Here we go. Ready, go. We're going. Okay, yep, mm -hmm. okay. Yep, I'm liking it. Taking it slow, taking it slow. <gasps> the F is done. Okay, moving along. Okay, FL, that's looking good. And then it is what it is. Don't go back over the letters. Just leave it, it'll be fine. It'll all be fine. Don't forget, if it's not super fine, these are vintage. They're total antiques that you picked up for a million dollars at the antique store downtown. Flour, done. I'm gonna let it dry for, I don't wanna let it dry. Let's see what happens. And with stencils, I think you're supposed to pull them up immediately. Let's try. I'm gonna gently undo my painter's tape and then I'm gonna just go right up. Okay, here we go. One fell swoop. Oh no. The E and the R look like dog shit. The FLO and the W look good, but the E and the R, not so much. Okay, before this dries, I'm gonna go and get a Q-tip and at least try to clean up the center of the R and that little chingadera right there because that's just blocky. We can fix that, that's easy. Oh, see, if you don't look at the E and the R, the FLO and the W look real good. Okay, stop talking. You need to clean up the E and the R. Okay, so the good news is your spit, and a Q-tip, while the black paint is still wet, cleans it up really, really, really easily. And then I was looking, I thought the R looked gross, but actually the R in the stencil isn't that awesome. Point of the story is Q-tip and spit, keep them nearby. And look now, what? That says flour. Okay, so I need to put flour on the medium size bucket now while this dries, and then I need to stencil together the word market finish these off. So I have my word market all taped together. Now we're just gonna do the same thing we did. And I can't decide how close I want it to be, but we'll just go with that close. We're eyeballing it. I have the words flower and market on both the large and the medium bucket. The jury's out on how I feel about it. I think the R in the stencil pack is fucked. It's throwing off my whole look. That's not my fault, it's the stencil's fault. <laughs> look, the O and the W and the L, those all look good. It's the fucking R in the middle. I hope I just didn't ruin my R buckets. I don't mind it so much on the big bucket, but I think these um, letters are a little bit large for the medium size bucket. <laughs> Looks better like that if you ask me. <laughs> I got the established and the date to go and the number. We're already in deep, so let's keep going. Okay, 
So I've got the established on my big bucket and my tiny bucket because the medium bucket is just gonna get a number. I picked the date, which is not very vintage, but it still means something to me. 2003 is when we purchased this house. And so since these are gonna be planters in my backyard, I thought the year we purchased this house would be fitting. Now that the established is on the big bucket, I'm kind of liking them. It's so funny because this project I'm going like in and out. Do I love them? Do I hate them? Do I love them? Do I hate them? I had to get a little creative because no stencils I know of come with multiple letters. I did two zero and then I just used an eight as a placeholder and then I did three and I tamped him tamped that on, took it apart and I took the O all by itself, set it in the middle, tamp tamp tamped it on. <laughs> the little dot. I took a Q-tip and I stuck it in black paint and then I tapped it on there. So I'm thinking the big bucket is starting to look really cute now. So now all we need is the number. So they have a big N and a little O with a line under it and then a big number. Well, guess what? I don't have big numbers. I only have little numbers. So I think I'm gonna use a big N and a big O, but then that will look like no. I get why they did a little O. So we're gonna do a big N and a little O, but what's gonna throw me off are the numbers. Dare I hand paint numbers? Okay, I'm gonna think about it. I'm definitely using a big N and a little O, and then I'm just gonna draw a line underneath that, but then as far as the big numbers are concerned, I don't know. Yeah, we'll figure it out. So, who knew stenciling would take so damn long? I didn't. It's not like I've never stenciled before, but I've never stenciled anything that was this intricate with this many letters on this many things. Be prepared for that. The stenciling takes a little bit of time. So what I did for the number portion, I used a big N and then a little O, and then I just used little numbers because I figured back in the day, you know, 2003? Yeah, back in 2003, maybe they didn't have a bunch of stencils and, you know, Times are tough. I just figured there was like some galvanized bucket stencil guy who's looking around, he's getting ready to number the buckets and he's like, hey Bob, where are the big numbers for the stencils? I gotta number these damn buckets. And then Bob's over there and he's like, I don't know, but guess what? I got the little number stencils and then He's like, well, shit, I gotta get these these buckets numbered because they gotta go to the flower market. So he just used the little numbers. So that's what I did. But the little line underneath the O, I literally just winged that and I took paint just right on the edge and then I just went like this on the edge of the bucket. And then I cleaned it up with Q-tip in my spit. So Q-tips and spit came in handy. And I'm actually thinking that I am back on the faux galvanized bucket bandwagon again. I mean, look at them. They look cute. So weird. I've been so like up and down about these damn buckets. And then I did take some creative licensing on the shitty ass stencil R's. So I took my Q-tip and scraped up in the center of the R a little bit just to separate it some more. And I think that made a huge difference. So yay, yay, yay. The next thing these need is some pretty flowers in them, but that is not gonna happen tonight because the sun's going down and I'm hungry and I've got shit to do. At least we're done with the main, I mean, we're literally like, it's done. It's done and it looks super cute. It's done. <laughs> All right. I've been out in the garage for a while and so I'm super excited. And I'm even more excited that they do look really good. And I can only imagine when flowers are in them, they're even gonna look that much better. So the next time you see these amazing galvanized buckets will be in the yard with some flowers. Okay, I went to the Lowe's and I got some plants and I got some soil. Everything is looking good. So here is the reveal of our faux galvanized Wayfair pots, set of three that are on sale on Wayfair.com for $155. Oh, hell yeah. I just filled them with succulents or drought tolerant plants because those are my jam, but you could easily do like lavender, dahlias, geraniums, whatever you like. 
I was showing them to Davis and he was like, wait, those aren't metal, those are plastic? So, I think we achieved it. I mean, he is only a 19 year old boy. So, I mean, like, what does he really know? But if I fooled him and he thinks these look like galvanized buckets, our job is done. So, yay. So, what is the final tally of our three super cute faux galvanized pots? Let's refresh our memory. So, the set of three at Wayfair.com was on sale for one. $55.99. Granted, theirs are larger than ours are, so there is that to consider. But their regular price was $300, so that's $100 a bucket, basically. So we'll just say the sale price is $155, and that would give us the equivalent of our three size buckets. What did we spend? It wasn't $155. I'll tell you that right now. It wasn't even damn close. My Home Depot receipt, I spent $27.99 at the Home Depot. That was for two cans of spray paint, all three of my buckets, those weird little pipe flangey things that I used for the handles right here. That was even for screws. That's it. That's all I bought at the Home Depot. That was $27.99. And then I went over to the Joann's and I bought my stencils and I bought my black paint. And I wanna say the stencils were like $5 top. So let's say we spent 30 at the Home Depot and we spent five at the Joann's. So $35. It's a we can make that DIY miracle. So we got three very good size pots, I might add, that you can customize and make your very own. But just knowing that you can get a galvanized look from a can of spray paint and plastic squeegee of brown, I think that's pretty good. Like I said, if you see something and you think it's cool, but it's just too damn expensive, do it yourself. What have you got to lose? I think everything we make turns out pretty cute. Even though I was on the fence with this one, I think the final result is amazing all right everyone thanks so much for watching if you like this video please be sure to give it a big thumbs up also share this video with your family and friends and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to my channel i put out a new diy wednesday video every other wednesday at 5 30 pacific standard time so make sure you ring that notification bell so that you are alerted of all of the amazing diys that you can do for totally cheap that don't look totally cheap and you know what I'm talking about because we've all seen them this was another good one and I'm super excited and if you guys happen to attempt it even on one I really like the um the larger like five gallon or ten gallon bucket one I like the way that one turned out you could easily do one bucket for like ten bucks I bet okay as always thanks for hanging out